Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and in this lesson we are doing proportional relationships with graphs and fractions, and you'll get to see one of my worst pieces of art yet. Let's get started. In this lesson we're going to talk about proportional relationships, look at graphs that involve fractions, and do a couple of sample questions together. Let's begin. First of all, we're going to review real quick what a proportional relationship looks like on a graph. A proportional relationship, you'll know if it is because it goes through the origin, 0, 0, and it is a straight line. Those are the two key indicators that you're looking at a proportional relationship. When you're given a graph and a table like this, you can use that to piece together some of the, the information. Let's look here. We know we go through the origin. If we're starting on our table here, we'll say the cost of gumdrops. So if I buy one pound of gumdrops, the cost would be $2. You can see that right there on the graph. Um, so the cost of only, or how many pounds would you get for just one dollar? You'd go down to one dollar and kind of slide across there, and oh, that's 0.5, which is equal to one half. Then if we look at one half, or one and a half pounds of gum, gum drops, that would be our 1.5 mark. Now we go up and it would cost three dollars right at that point. And then if we went over two, and this one's a little bit different, we went two and three quarters. And you can see that would be the point right there. It's two and three quarters and then we go up to meet our line and it would be at 5.50 or five dollars and fifty cents. That's how we would use the graph to fill in this table. And you can see the table has some fractions in it. The, the um, ordered pairs there have fractions in them. But I want to tell you something else. There's some important things to note, even though we were just looking at a what might have been a simple table with gumdrops and costs. And by the way, that was the, the terrible drawing I was talking about. Those were my version of gumdrops. That was pretty terrible. All right, <clears throat> let's move along. The first thing to note is that the unit rate is the cost per pound. In this table, you're given that value. One pound costs two dollars, right? If you are not given that, you can find it by taking any cost divided by the number of pounds. So, for example, five dollars and fifty cents divided by three and three quarters gives you two. Three dollars divided by one and a half gives you two. One dollar divided by one half gives you two. Any cost divided by pounds will give you a consistent unit rate. Because the unit rate is a constant, it will become what we call the slope of the line. And we've also called it the constant of proportionality, or k, in different equations that we have written in the past. It's a proportional relationship because it's a straight line and it goes through the origin. That's also important to note. If you see a graph, you can tell if it's a proportional relationship. However, you don't actually need a graph to do any of this. The graph is sort of an extra visual that is not completely ne necessary. So let's take a look. We're going to back step a little bit and take our table here with the missing values. And let's say that we don't have a graph. We're not given a graph. You can just write an equation and solve for the missing values. And we've talked about the equations. If it's the constant of proportionality. If you know it's proportional relationships, this is your equation to find the constant. What is our constant? By the way, the constant, again, is the unit rate and the slope of the line. But that's a, the equation we would use. If you're trying to find your y value, it's k times your constant times your x value. And if you're trying to find your x value, it's your y value divided by the constant. Now you might say, I don't see any x's and y's. Well, just wait, because there they are. There's your x and your y. Your x is going to be the left column. Your y is going to be the right column. Pretty straightforward. Now let's go ahead and solve. First off, let's solve our constant using math. Our constant, we can pick any point. Remember, 
except 0, 0, that's not going to help us out. But any point other than the origin will give us our constant if we do our y value divided by our x. So 2 divided by 1, that's the only point we're given, and so our constant is 2. Now we can fill out the whole rest of the table. Let's go to um, finding the, we're going to do, first use the middle equation y equals kx to find if you have one and a half pounds, what is your cost? So I'm going to multiply the constant, 2, times one and a half pounds, and that gives me 3. We saw that on the graph, but now we've solved it mathematically using our equation. Let's go up to... We don't, let's say we don't know how many pounds it is for, for one dollar. That is our y value divided by the constant, one divided by two, which is one half, right? You can see that. And if we use that equation again, um, it would, this final one, we would use the middle equation again, y is equal to our constant times x. So two times two and three quarters gives us 5.5. .5. Same numbers, exactly the way you see it there, just like what we saw in the graph. So you can use the equations or you can use the graph. And unlike the graph, if you do use the equations, it's always accurate and it's not limited by the size of your paper. So there are definitely some advantages to using the equations. All right. Let's do another one here. This is our fraction graph. We've got our graph there and our table. You could pause this one and try and fill in those values. You can use the equations or you can use this graph to fill in those values. And then come back to the recording video when you're done filling it out yourself. Did you do all the work? This isn't going to work if you're not doing the work. Because I'm not here to do the work. Well, I'm going to do it anyway, though. So I may as well get going. All right, here we go. We know that it is a constant of proportionality because it goes to the origin and it's a straight line. We need to confirm that at the beginning. If it is a constant of proportionality, then we can fill it in um, using the equations or we can just use the graph. For this, I'm going to use the graph real quick. Um, my x value of 1, my y value would be 8. When my y value, kilometers, is equal to 4, my, y, my x value, or hours, is equal to 0 0.5, or 1 half. I go to 1 and a half, and that lines up with 12. And 2 and a half lines up way up here with 20. And now we're going to get rid of that graph completely and talk about some sampled question types that you will be asked given this type of um, graph and table. One question you might be asked is to write an equation that models this data. There are three different equations you can write. One is your constant of proportionality equation, two is solving for y, and three is solving for x. Usually, in most cases, they want you to give the middle equation, the one solving for your y value. Okay. So to do that, you first have to solve for your constant, so you can pick any point in this table and do your y value divided by your x value. The only point you can't use is 0, 0. So I'm going to pick the easiest point, 8, 1. 8 divided by 1 equals 8. So I know my constant is equal to 8. That's helpful, and it was easy. Now I could have done 20 divided by 2 and a half, and I would also get 8. Any of those will work to give you 8. It's a constant. Now I can write equations for this set of data. What would my equation for y equals kx look like? Well, I would substitute the value of 8 in there, and it would look like this, y equals 8 times x. That's the equation. That's the full thing. It's solved. You don't have to do anything with it. That's the equation. The other equation I could have is x is equal to y divided by our constant of 8. Any of those two equations, the y equals 8x or x equals y over 8, those are both equations that model the data. Usually they're looking for the one in the middle, y equals 8x. 
Another sample question is you might be asked, what's the unit rate? Just remember that the unit rate would be distance divided by time or kilometers per one hour. Right? It's our constant of proportionality. And fortunately, we've actually already done this one because we have our miles per hour, 8 divided by 1, which gives us 8. We also can see on the table that a unit rate will have uh, an x value of 1. So we can see it right there where our x value is 1, our y value is equal to 8. Next type of question. What is the distance traveled after 7 and 1 third hours? Now this is a, a question that shows why having the equation is, is a little bit more effective than having this table or a graph. The equation is not limited. You can come up with something like seven and a third hours and still be able to calculate it as long as you use your equations that you've created. So now I have my equation, the distance y is equal to eight times x. x is the amount of time traveled. So it's just eight times seven and a third which gives me 58 and two thirds. So after seven and a third hours, you've traveled 58 and two thirds kilometers. All right, not maybe the most helpful piece of information, but you can see that you can use the equation to find any distance if you're given the time. You can also be use the equations that you've created to figure out any amount of time given the distance. So how long would it take you to go 27 kilometers? You're looking for the time x, so you do your distance divided by 8. y divided by 8, 27 divided by 8. It would take you 3 and 3 eighths hours to go 27 kilometers. Or you could convert that into a decimal and say 3.375 hours. But that's just being silly. Whoop, there I went. So a couple of tips to remember. First of all, I encourage you to use this equation to find the constant of proportionality. Writing an equation makes things more accurate and it doesn't limit you by the size of the graph you can draw. Also think about what the graph means because there might also be questions like, what does this point mean? You'd say, well, that point means that three pounds of gumdrops costs this amount of money, or you could travel this distance in this amount of time. So think about what the graph means, and you'll do great. I hope that video was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.